Hello, it's Steve White, Trickboy89 for Steve Arts 89 Well, everybody's talking about the Polygon article, Star Trek needs less logic and more crying. Um, now, when I first saw this, I rolled my eyes, of course. Um, and I should thank Robert Meyer Burnett for actually reading through the whole article, because I never would have read through the whole thing. Um, and after I heard it, I had some opinions, and I had some feelings. Um... <laughs> Now, I have reacted to Star Trek Discovery fairly negatively and harshly because it does a lot of things wrong by Star Trek. But um, I did find, at times, the reaction to some of the emotional stories, lines or elements to be very harsh and um, um, they seem to be just ignoring things that were sort of obvious. Now, I didn't really understand that and I didn't really think about it too much, really. Um, I mostly dismiss these people as being haters and that. But um, after going through that whole article, I can see where Star Trek Discovery is going wrong, but I can also see why um, old school Star Trek fans' reactions to it is also wrong. Now, what Maya Burnett went from... Now, the argument goes through the case that um, basically humans need empath empathy and emotions and that is sort of how to answer everything and deal with everything and, and that's the human way to deal with everything and, and that's very much a today way of thinking that's all about emotions and if you just respect and um, validate everyone's emotions and hug it out everything will be solved when that's not really the case um, things, big issues don't get resolved just by um, emotional, emotional issues like hugging it out like it doesn't it doesn't resolve issues. It may make people feel better about it. It may make um, it may make people feel better about, it, but that's about it. So the argument the argument in the article is that basically. Now the argument that um, what my Burnett was making was that Star Trek is a military um, organization, and there's no room for emotions in the military. That you know emotions will get you killed, basically. Um, which is not entirely true. A lot of the times in Star Trek, things are resolved by empath empathizing with someone or a situation, whereas just cold logic or um, shooting it out would not have resolved the problem. So he's ignoring the value of emotion and emotions. Now, what he's forgetting, and what Star Trek Discovery writers and Star Trek Discovery critics don't seem to be aware of, is in the original series, the original series, what, you know, is Star Trek was that they had um, a triangle. They had three characters. They had Spock, who was the logic, McCoy, who was the emotion, and originally it was supposed to be Uhura that was going to be the emotion, but um, they ended up making it McCoy for some reason. And Kirk was always having to decide between the two and find reason and balance, and that was the human condition. That was humanity. That was what we had to do in life. We had to look at things rationally and emotionally, acknowledge both, and find the solution. And Discovery has thrown the logic and the, which is a very stereotypically masculine thing, which is what Robert Meyer Burnett was pointing out within, with the military um, example and so forth. And they've thrown that out and they're focusing all on the emotion, which is a very stereotypically female thing. Um, and you can see these two sort of things playing out, because you can see all the old um, misogynist Star Trek fans reacting to the emotional elements and the emotional stories and the emotional um, focus very negatively because they view that as weakness and, and, and a feminine thing. And then at the same time, you can see a lot of the Star Trek Discovery people who are very... Um, anything I say is going to be seen as just an insult. But um, they're focusing just on the emotional side of things, and they are... Um, dismissing the value of the 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 stereotypically masculine view of um, you know logic and um, how the military would deal with something how today's military would deal with something we've got the people react sort of reacted to how today's military would deal with situations and the new sensitive people you know saying how we would deal with things emotionally and should deal with things emotionally today how they see things and projecting both those things into the future 
with this organization that isn't a military organization but isn't an emotional counseling validation service. <laughs> it is an organization run by evolved people who have gotten past all of this. They've gotten past the military, militant, um, logic only, cold sort of mentality that, you know, that has gotten us into a lot of the problems that we're into today with, with wars and the military. And it's gotten past the emotional, irrational, um, sort of me, 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 I need validation, this is what I want, and, and dismissing, you know, other things that are important and other people. They've gotten past all that and they've managed to find something better. And it, it was just kind of fascinating. I'm, I'm reading this article which is all about emotion and validating emotion and dismissing logic and rationality and having this person argue from a very stereotypically masculine and a little misogynist view that all that is, is, is female and that the male way is the way to go and, and males don't have emotions. So that was his way of dealing with it, looking at it. And they're both wrong. And that and they and what Star Trek needs they need to take the old Spock logic and the and, and the sort of current day McCoy emotionalism and put them back together with with someone who can, you know, do what Kirk did, which is look at the two and find the balance. Star Trek needs balance. Star Trek is imbalanced. I don't think Star Trek is really unbalanced so far as leaning towards logic. I felt like, especially once I got to Next Gen, they dealt very much with emotions in that. But Discovery has taken it to a, another level, and then we've got all these other people who are responding to it on another level. So you have just a total imbalance now. And that's why you have the fans, one side of fans that hate the show, and the other side of new fans who love the show. And it's a mess, because they can't, they can't, they, 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 don't, they don't have, it's like the Spock and McCoy arguing, that's what it is now, and we need the Kirk, where is the Kirk, we need a Kirk on that show, who, we need a, we need a Spock and a Kirk on that show now, because all we have is a bunch of McCoys running around, and that's not going, because if all we had on the original show was McCoy running around, um, Robert Maibonet is right, they would have all been killed, because they had no logic and rationality, um, it was all emotionalism, um, and that's what Discovery is now, unfortunately. And I'm not saying those things aren't valid, but they need to be balanced with logic and rationalism. Um, so I just found it really fascinating to look at, read that article, see his response, feel my response, and realize that part of Discovery's makeup is valid, but it undermines itself by having no restraint and no control and being just... Um, just set free <laughs> to just, you know, run wild and not actually have anything like, and that's, that's, that's really who Michael Burnham's character is. She's just wild emotionalism. And up until about the fourth season where she actually does now seem to have some sense of, I need to rein myself in because I have all these responsibilities and all these, and that's why I, I don't have as much issue with the character this year. She seems to have found some sense of that. Um, she still has a lot of issues, um, but at least that seems to have been tempered a little bit by the responsibility of command, which of course she never had before. She could always just argue against her commander or whatever that they were wrong and be emotional and irrational and just do whatever she thought would solve the situation. It's a different story when you're in that position and you have to, um, you know, take care of everyone and, and deal with the whole situation, not just your feelings are of it. So um, I just found that really fascinating and interesting, and it did make it did sort of make me see part of Star Trek Discovery is, um, although it's flawed, it is something that they are. It's not it's not just bad writing. It is actually like an ideology of emotionalism that they value, and that's fine. But you need to balance it with the other side. And like I said, that's not what they're doing. They've got a bunch of McCoys running around the ship and no Spocks and no Kirks. And that's why season two was good, because they had Captain Pike, who was very much a Kirk, sort of trying to rein in all this emotionalism without dismissing it, without being, you know, the Spock and being totally cold and logical. Um, and that's why I have some faith in the new series, because that character works in the Star Trek universe. Um, and if Spock is allowed to be logical in that series, 
along with all the emotional people who will undoubtedly be there, they should be able to find that balance again and that show might actually work. But um, part of the problem, again, is they've taken away Spock's logic. They've made Spock emotional and irrational. They've, they've given him, they've made him into McCoy, basically, or tried to give him, make him more like McCoy because that's who they think of, you know, that's who they think is, like, right. So, yeah, so I'm getting a bit off, off, off the, um, I'm getting off the road at the moment, but um, and I'm also tired and my mouth is really dry, so I'm going to go. But, um, yeah, I just found that article interesting, and I found it fascinating that Robert Meyer Bennett was only seeing one side of it and realising that so many Star Trek fans, old-school Star Trek fans who criticise and hate Discovery, are looking at everything from that side, from the militaristic, cold, irrational, stereotypi stereotypically masculine view, and then realising that all the Discovery people are doing the complete opposite. And now we've got, like I said before, this McCoy and Spock situation with no Kirk. So there you go. I just had to share that little um, epiphany that I had and, and um, talk it out and, and, and um, um, articulate it. And I'm done. And I went over 10 minutes, which I did, didn't want to do, but I, I've done it. So um, thank you for listening to my um, thoughts. Uh, feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Um, and feel free to ding the bell and check that you're actually um, still subscribed because apparently this is the time of year YouTube unsubscribes people and so forth and whatever. I don't know. I'm going to go. Thanks. Bye.